and welcome back to another episode. We're so glad to have you here today. Today we're going to be recapping Battery Day, which has been long awaited and has finally come and gone. If you're new to the channel, we hope that you'll consider subscribing as we continue to post content regularly. And we are glad to talk about today because after having battery day announcements, there's a lot to talk about. So today Tesla talked about a lot of the hurdles that are in the way of taking electric cars to the next level. Specifically, he was talking about the cost of batteries in kilowatt hours. So the cost since Tesla started has substantially dropped. However, he talked about these costs starting to plateau in their acceleration and better costs. Additionally, the capacity needed to meet the demands of the future certainly isn't there today. And Tesla just laid out a roadmap of how they plan to grow their battery capacity by a hundred times. Probably the most exciting thing about Battery Day is what the roadmap looks like for the next three years. And really there's five areas that Tesla talked about where improvements are being made right now that are going to affect Tesla's over the next 12 to 36 months. We had some indications that the new battery was getting ready to come out and indeed they did explain the new battery today. Tesla is moving to a 4680 battery. That'll be the next generation battery and it'll be substantially larger. These new battery cells are going to have a tabless design which is going to streamline and simplify the manufacturing process. It's also going to allow these batteries to be six times more powerful and again, 50% more capacity. Tesla did let us know today that they are in pilot production for these new battery cells locally close to the Fremont factory. Tesla is planning to launch this battery in a much higher capacity across a number of their products that they offer today. This battery is going to change Tesla's in the future in ways that are going to be substantial. So here are some of the things that are going to happen. With this first enhancement, with just the new battery itself, we are going to see a 14% reduction in cost of the battery, and we're also going to see a 16% increase in available range for the same amount of battery capacity. This is pretty substantial, but it goes further. The next area that Tesla talked about was cell production itself. What Tesla has finally been able to do is something that they bought Maxwell Technologies for, and that is dry cell production. So historically, these cells have to be made in a wet process, but by being able to make these in a dry process, they're able to significantly reduce the footprint of the manufacturing facility, but also streamline the process and speed it up substantially. As a matter of fact, they explained that one production line will be able to have seven times the output that it has today. And that's before you even consider that the factory to make these can be substantially smaller since there's a lot of processes that have been completely cut out in the production line. This dry enhancement is going to reduce costs by a further 18%. Next, Tesla talked about the anode material that they are going to be moving to. They're actually going to be using a pure silicone material in their anodes, which is incredible. Silicones today are engineered to be able to be used in batteries, and that's because they're unstable and they expand with heat. However, Tesla has figured out a way to do this with pure silicone. What is traditionally done costs between $6.60 per kilowatt hour all the way up to $100 a kilowatt hour. Once Tesla has fully rolled this out, it will cost $1.20 per kilowatt hour to make these cells. This is an incredible enhancement. Further, silicone stores nine times the lithium that graphite can hold. So with these enhancements, Tesla is going to see a 5% reduction in cost and a 20% increase in range. Additionally, Tesla talked about the cathode, which is the other side of the battery. Traditionally, this is made out of cobalt, which is not a good mineral to use because it's a harmful harvesting process when they go to mine cobalt. Tesla has worked to enhance this process to allow nickel to be used instead of cobalt. But with that, Tesla has a strategy and it's really a three-tiered strategy. For storage devices like the Powerwall, they're planning on using an iron material. For production cars, they're planning to use a nickel manganese blend. And then finally for the Cybertruck and Tesla Semi, it appears they're going to be using pure nickel. 
This is going to be a good balance to use these minerals effectively in their best application. With that, it sounds like potentially the Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi are going to have the best material available in those platforms. So the enhancements they're going to gain from this is a 12% reduction in cost and a 4% boost to range. And then finally, Tesla talked about the production methods that they're using to make cars, specifically the single casted rear on the Tesla Model Y that we already knew about. And then recently we heard word that Tesla was working on a single casted front for the cars as well. It turns out this is indeed the case. So with this, we're going to have a single casted rear and single casted front. By doing this, they're going to reduce weight. They're going to be reducing part numbers. Just in the cost of the underbody of the car, that reduction is 40% by going to these two single casted pieces. This is going to be a very important enhancement to the Tesla Model Y and the Tesla Model 3. Overall, cost is going to be reduced by 7% and range will increase by 14% by using these new single casted systems. One of the other interesting things about the structure of the car is Tesla used an analogy about airplanes and fuel. Originally, they used storage tanks to store fuel in airplanes until eventually somebody said, why don't we just store the fuel in the wings themselves? So they designed the wings to be able to hold the fuel that it is required. Tesla is going to use this same mindset for batteries moving forward. As these roll out, rather than having a standalone battery pack, the batteries will be manufactured inside of the car. So they will be part of the structure of the vehicle. There's obvious benefits to this, including no longer needing to assemble a battery pack. These are now going to be part of the car. Additionally, they're going to be able to bring the batteries closer to the center of the car, protecting those cells from impact even further than they are today. And then finally, the structure will be stronger because of the way that this is going to be manufactured. According to Tesla during this event, they made the claim that a convertible built like this would be stronger than a traditional sedan that was not a convertible. We'll have to wait and see what that actually means, but I'm very excited to see what this does to the safety of the car, which is already an incredibly safe car to have. With all of that said, Tesla has pulled all these numbers together, and here's the final totals. 56% reduction in cost, 54% increase in range, and then finally, because the manufacturing footprint will be smaller with these new methods, a 69% reduction in capital required to make these factories. Now, all that said, these are not ready yet. These are not on the market yet, and Tesla did admit that these batteries are in pilot production right now. We also know that based on what they shared with us, it'll be 12 to 18 months before Tesla starts to realize some of these benefits. Further, it'll take roughly a full 36 months before Tesla realizes the whole benefit of all of these enhancements they're working on right now. This is a really awesome future for Tesla given what these enhancements will do to the company. The cars are going to go farther, cost less, and last longer. But with that, it does not appear that the Tesla Model Y or the Tesla Model 3 are going to be impacted in the short term. Further, it appears it's going to be a while before most cars are impacted. And that brings us to the big announcement at the end, which was the Tesla Model S Plaid, which was very exciting to see. We anticipated it, so we weren't really surprised. But what we are surprised are the stats, and here they are. The Tesla Model S Plaid will go 200 miles per hour, a quarter mile in less than nine seconds, equipped with more than 1,100 horsepower, zero to 60 in less than two seconds, and a starting price tag of 139,990. Finally, range. The Tesla Model S Plaid will come with a range of 520 miles, which is mind blowing. Although I'm not surprised seeing these stats, I was surprised seeing the price. Recently, a competitor who's getting ready to launch a vehicle was able to share some of the stats on their upcoming vehicle. The Tesla Model S is clearly pointed to put as much pressure on that new competition. Furthermore, I think that the Porsche Taycan is under immense pressure once this Tesla Model S Plaid does come out. Now they did say it wouldn't be until the end of 2021 before this is available, 
So that's still quite a ways away. I'm kind of surprised to see that being the timeline given the competition is knocking on the door right now. That said, I don't see how Tesla is going to be able to move any quicker to launch this product. Finally, Tesla announced they are working on developing a $25,000 Tesla that'll be coming in the next three years. Now, Tesla has made some price claims in the past and didn't quite deliver as expected, so we'll keep a close eye on this. Initially, I thought perhaps these enhancements would reduce the cost of the Tesla Model 3 to get it close to that $25,000 price, but probably closer to $30,000. So I don't think it's the Tesla Model 3 that's going to be at $25,000. I believe it's going to be a new vehicle altogether. Is it going to be a smaller vehicle? Most likely. Elon Musk did confirm that it will be an autonomous capable vehicle. So that is an important key. It's probably going to be a compact car smaller than the Tesla Model 3. Is it going to be a Tesla Model 2? Perhaps, only time will tell. But three years is a ways away. But at $25,000, there's probably not many, if any, gas cars that can compete with a $25,000 Tesla. But we'll just have to wait and see what the stats look like as far as range and what that final price actually looks like and the size of the car, of course. With all of that said, I think that battery day today was a very important day. This just laid out the roadmap for what the future looks like at Tesla. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We continue to post content regularly and we enjoy having you along. Thanks for joining us today and we'll catch you next time.